Hello, everybody, and welcome to another evening Nil Talk Live. And tonight, as you can see, I'm joined by my model, Romy, and my right hand in crime, my partner in crime, <laughs> Natalia Gritsenka, <laughs> our international <laughs> trainer. And tonight, Natalia and I will explain to you how to create an inlay nail using different gels, different combinations for the yeah. most fabulous and dramatic effect. So, let's get started. I'm going to create an almond nail for you using power gel, which is a very firm gel, standard builder gel clear, which was the first gel in the magnetic assortment, and I'm going to use a lot of different fun products to create the inlay. And of course, I'm going to work on forms. I'm going to work on the high-tech form. And while I'm putting on my gloves, Natalia will explain to you a little bit more about what we're going to do. Yeah, so um, we are going to have a lot of fun making uh, beautiful nails and it will be inlay design. And honestly to say, I'm really very happy that these designs are coming back because for some time we have um, forgotten about them. And inlays, they are absolutely beautiful because then you can combine a lot of product that you have already and uh, that perhaps you want to buy. Uh, and uh, you will see also how you combine them and how beautiful the result will be. Of course, the most important thing is the perfect form fit. And Natalia, these are my favorite forms, the high-tech forms. They are new by Magnetic, and let's have a look at what makes these so special. As you can see, we have a little perforation here, and this middle part of the form, the paper backing, is actually opened up. So the thing is that when you want to start fitting this form, you can mm -hmm. remove the middle part of the paper backing, like this, Okay. take it off, and then you can play around with your form without jeopardizing the glue and on the bottom of the and form. And I will say that this is a very good idea to have these forms like that, because uh, then uh, whatever you will do, you're never touching the glue surface, and then it's sticking very nicely to the finger, and it's not moving anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, of course, we now have opened the window in the nail form, and we're going to use the perforated side of the form to create extra strength and support in the form. So, let's look at what I'm doing. As you can see here, I have the perforated little line. And that is made so that I can easily fold back this part of the form, giving proper support on the underside of the form. And having a really strong and perfect form. Why is this so important, Natalia? Uh, it's important because uh, because we are working with uh, uh, acrylic or with gel, so and we have to keep the curvature for our nail. So that's why it's important to make the proper curvature, and then it will not be open during uh, the process when we are making nail until we remove a nail form. Proper form fit is of course dependent on the hypernicium of the natural nail and the side walls of the natural nail. So let's have a look at how good this form fits without any pre-tailoring of the form. If we look at the natural nail of Romy, you can see she has a very nice rounded hypernicium. And when I start to use this form, and I want to apply it underneath her natural nail, you can see on the sides that the form doesn't really fit underneath her free edge. So I need to make the form a little bit deeper here in the center to make room for her hypernicium. And here on the sides, I'm going to count these lines in order for a perfect form fit. So one, two, three on this side, and one, two, three, three and a half on the other side. I have a question. Uh, why you are counting this line, Pepin? So that I can apply the form better underneath her complete natural nail, and that yeah. her side walls won't interfere with the form placement. Because, okay. of course, Romy has nice and thin side walls. Mm -hmm. Some people, like you, yeah. have, have very strong side walls. And very high. <laughs> and very high, and that will push away the form. Yeah, so, yeah, that, so that, that makes it may, uh, make very good sense. So when you start to cut this, of course, make sure that you really pay attention to it. So, I tailored the form. Let's check to see whether or not it fits underneath the nail. So first, I'm keeping on the paper backing here, because mm -hmm. I can still m use it and move it and around. And I'll just see if I can fit underneath the natural nail of Romy. And this fit is actually OK. Let's go back in a little bit. Yeah, so these ears, they're okay. like uh, creating uh, extra space for the skin. So then uh, the skin will not push away the nail form. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart. Then idea. I'm removing 
with my index finger and middle finger, I'm removing the paper backing because now is the moment of form application. Natalia, applying the form in an angle is very uh, important. Eh? To either have an angle, you have to think about angles. You have to think about angles, but also you have to know what sort of nail you are going to create in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like foundation. If I want to make, for instance, like a uh, round building, I have to make round foundation. So uh, in our business, it's very similar. If we want to make a ballerina, then we have to place our nail form a bit straight. Yeah. If we want to make a modern almond, then we have to place our nail form being a bit up. Yeah, It all so depends on the upper arch, I believe. It depends on the upper arch and also on the shape of the nail itself. Hmm. Uh, I think that I'm just going to make a classic nail just to start this season. So I'm going to apply the form following the natural nail of uh, Romy. So I'll just do that. And later on in the season, we will do a more arch upward. Yeah, the different, different type of, uh, uh, of shapes uh, with different type of um, upper uh, line. <laughs> so the form is applied and let's get started. I'm going to create first a clear base layer so that I have space to work with. So we're going to work reverse. Yeah. So what is the product that I'm first going to use, Natalia? So uh, I would suggest you uh, the easiest way just to use the power gel. Mm -hmm. Because power gel, uh, it's very easy to apply and very easy uh, to create uh, in uh, extension. So I would use this one. And power gel is a very thick gel and you have to work with um, your brush and also with a liquid. Yes, and liquid, and liquid that we are using, it's a prep and wipe. Prep and wipe that we also use to prep the natural nails. And you really only need a very small amount, I believe. Yeah. Because normally we have to use prep and wipe to clean our brush. We should not use prep and wipe to create a nail like normally we are doing in acrylic system. So just clean the brush and then it will be just enough. So I applied the power gel already on the form and I'm just going to create a very thin extension edge. So I'll just make sure that the model is here. Yeah. As you can see, I have applied it a little bit on the natural nail, mostly on the form, and I'm just creating on shaping or, or uh, focusing on shaping. Yeah, I really love power gel because it's so easy to work with that. Yeah, because it only cures when you want it to cure. Yeah. And yeah, it's super easy. And Especially when you do the reverse technique. Huh? Yeah. And it's also very easy to file because it's very soft product. So then you also have a chance to create as sharp as S and as perfect structure as you want. And just a bit like buffing and then your nail is done. So of course, concentrate on your side wall lines and your lower arch lines to make everything as good as possible. So the nail form is going to be an element. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have to correct side wall, lower arch lines. So, and you're creating this in very thin layer. Yeah. As thin as possible. Yeah, super. And that means that we need to cure this for about 30 seconds. So, after about 30 seconds, the first coat of power gel, the clear extension edge, is created. And now I'm going yeah. to create the nail bed elongation. Okay. So, and uh, what are you going to do uh, uh, with what you are going to create? It? Well, we have two colors that are suitable for nail bed elongations yep. in power gel. That's the extender and the nude. And I prefer to work with both of them. So I first yep. use the nude to create coverage, but because it's a little bit orangey in color, it's too dark in color for our model, I'm going to cure that and then mm -hmm. do a coat of extender over this. That's a great idea, I would say. So, because then we also can use it on, differ uh, on different uh, color skin. <laughs> you just need a little tiny, tiny bit of gel. And it's better to take one bead extra than taking too much to start with. So I have it here on my spatula and I'll put it on the nail bed. I apply this on her natural nail, in the lower third of her natural nail. And I'm just going to focus on creating the smile line. Hold the finger downward a little bit and first press it into her natural nail. It looks really very easy to work with this power gel. It is super easy. Mm -hmm. Just following and creating a smile line. It's important that it's even in thickness. 
and that the wall here is high enough mm -hmm. so that we can put all the uh, inlay products like in between this area of the nail. So where the highest part of the uh, nail bed elongation is, that's where we can also apply the most of the products that we will add to it in this area. Of course, double check to make sure that it's as perfect as possible and then cure for another 30 seconds. So this coat of power gel is also cured and now I'm going to use the last color power gel extender, which is really a flesh color. Yes, it's uh, it's not such pigment, and, and it also it has very nice like skin tone uh, shade, so it looks really cool. Yeah, so I'm going to use that here on her natural nail, and then blending it out over the nude color. So I have it here on my spatula. Be careful not to use too much again, because you really don't need to use that much. Just roll it gently off of your spatula, like that. The first thing that you need to do is to create an airtight seal around the cuticle to prevent lifting, but make sure that you stay away from the actual skin. So just bring it up to half a millimeter towards the cuticle. So let's see what I'm doing. So I'm first flattening everything towards the cuticle. I'll stay away about one millimeter, using the belly of the brush to bring all the product towards the center of the nail and then gently extending it over the nude application. Cleaning my brush, going back towards the cuticle and just flattening everything, making sure that we have that airtight seal. So it's important uh, to seal it properly uh, to the nail before curing. Yes, okay. because if you do that later on with your file, you will always have a little bit of yeah, more chance of lifting. Okay. Yeah, and that makes just sense. Just flattening everything. The nail is now ready to go on the twin light, but be careful because we have to pinch this nail. So instead of doing 30 seconds, we will take about 10 to 20 seconds. So when the client experiences a little bit of warmth during the curing, this means that the polymerization uh, process is at its height, and now we can easily pinch the nail. So I prefer to use this pinching tweezer, but we have several different ones. For everybody, there's its own favorite. So take your pinching tweezers and apply this next to the nail. And don't press too hard on the natural nail. Of course, you always have to check whether or not it's cured. Yeah. But you can hear that. When it sounds very bright, then it's actually it means that we can pinch it. And also focus a little bit on the free edge. The warm means that it's really in the perfect situation to apply pressure on the nail and to create a nail bed or a C-curve. Yeah. Because why do we pinch? Uh, we are pinching our nail just because we want to create a very nice C-curve and also even C-curve. Because you know that uh, it's just a normal physics. We can apply our product being very thin, but if it's uh, our C-curve will be flat, so it means that uh, we can break our nail really very quickly. But with very nice, uh, create uh, nicely created C-curve uh, and with very thin application of the product, we, we will have very strong and yeah, wearable structure of the nail. Of course, now I go back in the light for the full cure. I'm cleaning my spatula so that everything is clean because I'm not using power gel anymore now. We have power gel in a clear version. I use that on the extension. Yeah. But later on, I want to use a different, uh, a different product on the actual extension when I did the inlay because then I want to emphasize the clearness of the product. Power gel clear is still a little bit grayish in color, perhaps. Uh, it's not such clear as uh, uh, that product that we are going to use now. It's still clear, but not such like clear like water. Power gel has a little bit of a sticky layer, so I'm using again prep and wipe, so it's really a functional all-in-one product, just to remove the sticky layer of the stickiness. It's just a tiny bit. So because I'm going to file the natural nail or the nail bed, and I'm going to uh, create a more sharp smile line. Mm -hmm. And that's because when you work with gel or with power gel, it always has a tendency to shrink back a little bit, making it more rounded, like rounded, like this. And what we want to create is a very sharp wall for our inlay design. So now it's a little bit like that, the wall, and now with my file, I just want to correct it until it's this. 
So for that, I'm going to use an emery board. You can see also now that instead of sh shiny, it is very matte. And the emery board is a wooden file with a really wood a wooden 180, 100, 180. Yeah. And I'm just going to use this up against the smile line, creating my wall for my product. On the sides of the nail, I'm angling the file in. On the very deepest point of the smile line, I'm holding my file straight. Yeah, so I also saw that many nail technicians, they're using just normal files for that. Do you think that this is a good idea, Pepe? You know, better to use something very thin with thin core as we have emery board? Well, especially on the side. Here in the middle part, you can do it with any file that you want to okay. do. Okay. You can also do it with like a new one of the hygienic files because this area is easy to file. There's a lot of thickness there. Mm -hmm. But here on the sides, the product is very thin. So now I need to have a very thin file to really get into my smile line corner mm -hmm. and going back to here. I also find that there's less movement in this file than there is even with this because there is still a little bit of sponge in there. Mm -hmm. So with the wooden file, I can really get in that corner. Be careful that you don't cut the skin of your client, of course. Yeah, and also it's important to go uh, from the sides, uh, in, inside, so then uh, our smile line will look very nice. And also from the side, uh, our smile corner will be absolutely sharp. Because in my own opinion, the most beautiful part in the, sm uh, in the uh, French, it's smile corners. And if they are made uh, really very sharp, so then you have very good impression of the nail. Yeah, of course I also need to file the surface a little bit, and I'll show you why I need to file the surface. If I angle my finger, you can see here that this area of the nail is still a little bit curved. Here, this area is a little bit over curved. And I don't want that curvature. Mm -hmm. I want that flattened. So I start in the center, holding the file very flat. And also in this way, you are helping yourself to create a very straight line of your smile wall. Exactly. It's so nice that the person that you're working with knows what we are doing. <laughs> of course, that is something that we always tend to do in Nail Talk Live. I will remove the dust. And let's check what we see. We have here a flattened area. We have a very sharp wall. Yeah, that's cool. So we're ready to start to do the in there. As you can see, I have here colors on my palette. And nowadays, Natalia, it's very popular to do inlay also with gel polishes. Yes. Combina combining everything. We can combine everything. And this is a good idea. Yeah. But yeah. 20 years ago, when I got my education, it was like the worst thing ever. You had to work only with this product or only with that product. So I really had to get used to this mixing and matching everything. But it is super easy. Yeah. And I would say that having all this uh, product now, we can have more freedom. Yeah, and more combination possibilities, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. also faster. Yeah. So I have here on the palette, I will show you, this is gel polish purple beetle. It's beautiful. Yes, it has a shine, a metallic it, shine. It, a metallic shine, yeah. Here we have blue sky gel polish, mm -hmm. which is a pastel color, and here we have a blue concentrate, which is um, a concentrated gel polish color so that we can mix and match. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with purple beetle, up against the wall of the smile line. So I'm just painting. Would you recommend always to start with a dark color? Um, I would recommend yes. Uh, uh, except if we are going to work uh, with something light, then of course it has to be white. But if it has to be colored, so uh, then uh, I would put in the smile line always a bit darker uh, color just to have more contrast for that. Yeah. Of course, be careful that you don't use it too thick. Then I'm taking some yeah. of the blue sky underneath the first color, and I don't want to apply it over the whole nail. I just want to make the blending here. So then it looks like an ombre already. Yeah, but don't make it too difficult on yourself, of course. 
This is just the background for the colors that we will use. So it should not be like perfect, perfect. It can no. be just blended and that's it. Just let your yeah. imagination run wild. For the blending, of course, I flatten the brush. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting to pull it also downward. And just a little bit of the blue concentrate on the s corners, just that a little bit. Yeah, it's like uh, emphasize it a bit. Yeah, making it more dramatic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course you can apply these colors in one coat or in two coats. This depends on the thickness of application, but be careful not to apply it too thick. We have to check visually to see if the color intensity saturation is good enough for our design. So let's have a look on the camera. So this is my first coat that we did now. And I think I'm going to apply the colors once more, just to get it a little bit brighter. So I'll just quickly do that. So ready to start with our inlay. And I have different products that I will use. One of these is Leaf Gold. I'm going to use crushed opals and just some flakes that were on the bottom of my drawer. First thing that I'm going to do is use a little bit of building base. And building base is a clear gel that you can use to build an apex with, to build a nail with. But in this case, I'm just going to use it as glue. So, first a thin coat of building base. And then here and there, just some fun little thingies. It will look absolutely beautiful when, when we finish and we'll start sealing this with top gel. Be careful not to use too much. Although, in my opinion, the sky is the limit with these things. It's very hard to stop. <laughs> very hard to stop. Beautiful. So, when we've done that, we're going to use a little bit of leaf gold, but this is really less is more. Yeah, this is just little pieces, but they are creating very good very good impression for the nail. Yes, and especially because I'm going to do something fun mm -hmm. before we finish it. Mm -hmm. And this really gives a nice added dimension. Yeah. And to finish everything, I'm going to use some of the crushed opals in a beautiful blue variant. And w which is v very good that with this inlay design, we can use a bit, yeah, not, not big particles, but some bigger particles that that also can place uh, in the area on the of the smile line. And after the sealing with the gel, it will like shine through the gel. So I think this is now enough for this first application. Mm -hmm. I just think that we need a little bit more gold here. Just one second. With the leaf gold, you can work really for you buy one little jar of leaf gold and you have enough leaf gold for the rest of your life. So now it's more in harmony. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, and you can go in the light. There, during this 30 seconds, now the light actually sticks everything together. So instead of working with only clear builder gel, I'm also going to work with transparent glass gel polish. And transparent glass gel polish is a builder gel, but then in the bottle and it's colored. And this gives, I'm going to use blue to uh, give like family to the overlay colors and the base colors. So it creates a little bit more drama. So if we start to look at the nail as it is now, you can see very clearly the color differences between the glitter and the gold and the opals. I want to soften this a little bit. And for that, I'm going to use cyan blue transparent glass. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. And as I said, this is transparent. So I'm going to apply this on certain areas, just to make kind of a more sense to this family. Mm -hmm. But not everywhere and not too thick. So if you see that it's too thick, just remove it a little bit. And this cures for 10 seconds. So I'm going to finish this nail with the clearest gel that we have, Builder mm -hmm. Gel Clear, which is a very strong, very clear, transparent gel. And I'm just going to use the same brush, the Detailer number 3, because this enables me to really get into the corners of the smile and cre create a nice, even surface. Okay, so <laughs> here we have the clear. 
I will just take a scoop like that. I'll apply it on the nail, make contact, and the clear actually works as a magnifying glass on your inlay. Be careful that you don't apply too much and that you let it self-level in between all of the elements that we placed on the nail. Yeah, and also what I love about that gel, that this is also self-leveling gel. Yeah. So then it will look absolutely cool and uh, you can seal everything nicely and then uh, you already will see like almost ready result. Of course, we are going to file it first, but even now we can see what result we are going to have. It's like 3D. Yes, and the nails are ready to cure. So you can see it or I do really have to file because you can see the bumps and the dumps. Of course, you could add more gel to even it out, but then I think it's going to be a little bit too thick. But I have my trusted power vent here, which is a portable ventilation that you can use to file and you can take it with you. And it's portable, so no cords. But as you can hear, this makes some noise. So I'm going to file the nail and I'll be right back. So I filed the nail quickly and now we're going to finish the nail. But first, let's have a look what I did with it. Of course, the application around the cuticle, we already did very well. We yeah. were really concentrated on that. This part of the nail was already filed. So it just was a matter of blending the very end of the nail towards the nail bed itself with the file. So if you look at it from the side, you can see a soft arch, just a very classic nail. Of course, this nail can be finished as you like, using extreme mud for a mud effect, using a traditional top gel, even buffing it to a high shine, but I love to use Supreme Finish. Top gel without sticky layer, cures in 90 seconds, and is just perfect high shine for every single application. Yeah, that's, that's, that's totally true. And also it has very good adhesion. Yes, it has super adhesion. You can yep. even use it on the natural nails. Exactly, straight away, yeah. So let's have a look at what we have done. This is always the nicest part of the application because now we can see whether or not our inlay looks beautiful. Of course, first start at the middle, go towards the cuticle, and this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Ta -da. Yeah, this is the most satisfying moment. Exactly. In the and all time when you see this, you're just thinking, my God, it looks so cool. And so easy. Yeah. Let the Supreme finish level, and we go in the light for 90 seconds. The nail is finished. I hope that you like what we've done. Let's have one more look, a little bit closer. As you can see, we have beautiful nail bed elongation, very sharp smile line, and you can see all the elements shining in the free edge. Super easy, nice and thin. Of course, you can do this on one or two nails and then combine it with, for instance, the purple gel polish that we used in the inlay design on the other nails to make it easy and faster for you in your salon. Doing inlay nails is really a way to start playing around with modeling the nails, with creating longer shapes and just enjoying our beautiful profession. We used to do this a lot in Natalia. Yeah. It was gone. Now yeah. it's getting back. Luck luckily that it's getting that it's coming back and it's really cool. Yes, it's it's a way of using all of your products in a different way than you're <laughs> used to and playing around with everything and just enjoy being a nail technician. See you next week, Nail Talk Live. See you.